Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. So I had a last minute change of plan for today's adventure really. I was gonna go up, not that big fell that you could see, but there's another one just behind him. He's called Weatherlam. I was gonna go up the other one that's behind him called Swirl How. But you know what? After getting this image in last week's video, which I really liked, I loved the way that image came out, I just felt like it was a bit of a shame to go up basically a treeless fell. It, it felt like the wrong move, you know? So I've chosen a location here, obviously still quite close to our other fell, relatively close. I've chosen a location, as you can probably see behind me, where there's just loads and loads of trees for us to work with, loads of those vibrant leafed, trees, <laughs> beautiful spring trees. So that's the plan for today. Um, I say that's the plan, it's really vague. Just picked a couple of areas on the map and I'm just gonna, yeah, just walk about really. Um, as the title of the video suggests, we have got no tripod, it's not a big deal, but well, I suppose it kind of is for me because I never, I'm never really without my tripod that often, but I did a video quite local to here, only about three weeks ago where I was shooting in JPEG, I had no tripod, bottom line is I loved it. So I won't be shooting in JPEG, but no tripod, I'm looking forward to it. As you can probably see off in the distance as well, look, we're just getting some really nice patches of light and stuff as well. And a lot of dark sort of moody clouds on top of that. The ingredients are looking good. So as far as I'm concerned, this is what handheld photography is all about. We're in aperture priority mode, as you can see there. And I'm just trying to make the most of, I suppose a nice few little patches of light right over on the right hand side there. Oh, sorry, on your left hand side, but on the right hand side of Helvellyn, which is that sort of section of dark collection of fells really, that you can see right off in the distance. And it's all about, taking your opportunities, you know, opportunistic landscape photography. We've got this nice selection of silver birch trees here on the right hand side. They've got that nice vibrant spring bloom, which is what I'm after. Nice little craggy section and the clouds are wonderful as well. So you can see how all of them pieces are there for the taking. We've just got to make sure that we compose, uh, compose them correctly so it makes a pleasing photograph. If, if it was only that easy each time, you've just got to compose them correctly to make a nice photograph. <laughs> um, and I think sometimes when you're in such a beautiful place such as this, of course it makes things a little bit easier because everything is just photogenic, isn't it? So I'm going to stick that tree up on the right hand side and then have some of these crags down at the bottom. What we zoomed in at, just over 70 millimeters, not as far as I thought actually. F9, ISO 64 and one, 1 60th of a second by the looks of it. And there we go, nice and simple. I just wanted to show you actually on um, the sort of video from the Z7. Um, I'll just pop it up for you to see there. What I like about this is imagine if you split this composition into four quarters. It really just feels like each quarter has something of interest. You know, the two right hand quarters, the top right and the bottom right, of course, has got the tree and then the top left quarter has got the sky and the fell pretty much and then the bottom left quarter has got all of them crags so it's like a big jigsaw piece you know there's no real wasted space in this whole composition for me and I think of course it's always easier said than done isn't it like but a lot of the times that's how I'm treating my compositions I'm splitting it into quarters and almost treating it as four different photographs you know um, like a St George's flag isn't it and I'm, I'm thinking like, does something belong up there in the top left? Does it look right on the top right? You know, is there something on the bottom right that's meant to be there? Does it belong? And then same with the bottom left. And I find that really helps, you know, because sometimes when I split it into quarters like that, something might just feel a little bit off. And then it, it allows me to then sort of reassess my composition and sort of start from scratch. But yeah, um, it's a good little technique. This is lovely, man. It, it feels like one of them locations where I barely, I'm gonna to have to move around. I've just seen this, I'll show you. I haven't figured out a composition yet because I haven't been over there, but look at 
Uh, I'll try and show you how to turn around actually. Look at that little tree there. There's got to be something with him. He is looking fantastic. So <sighs> nice simple one to start off the morning and things are going well. We'll check out our little mate over there now. This is class. So it's actually been uh, a, a quite difficult this, trying to shoot this tree. I've got up to it now and look, it's, it's like well bigger than I thought he was going to be. Now we're up close and personal. Um, I think the annoying thing is though, is there's a tree there, I think, just next to him. And he is just like wreaking havoc on the whole frigging composition, man. He's just, he just seems to be in the way with any little compositional idea that I get. But, and I think this is the only thing that I can do. Um, I've just got to accept that he's gonna be in the photograph, really. So what I like, and this is why I really wanna get a shot, is look at the sky, man. Look at it there. It's so dark and then it just like fades into um, like a little bit of a brighter sky. And especially through the camera, it just looks so cool. So I'm gonna grab a shot of this tree. The only way that I think that I can but at the very least, I'm definitely capturing um, the, the character, I suppose, the shape, the form of this tree in the way that I wanted to. And obviously the background view is just beautiful as well. I'm gonna shoot you in a portrait, um, but yeah, it's just this little stump thing here, I think might be a little bit annoying. But again, aperture priority, focused on the tree. I'm gonna put it on F4.8. I mean, at 35 millimeters, that's why we've got a random aperture going on, <laughs> but that's as wide open as I, as I can go. And then I'm just sort of sticking the tree on the left-hand side a little bit, one one thousandth of a second, I'm really quick shutter speed. And yeah, it looks all right, it's all right. It's, it's not perfect, I've had to compromise a little bit with that, that kind of stump, like I said. But yeah, the sky, look at it, mate. That like sort of moodiness at the top and how it sort of merges, it blends into like a bright section of sky. That's really cool. The tree trunk's nice and vibrant. The leaves are, of course, we've got that spring bloom vibrance again. Um, not bad at all. You may be able to see, just move my noggin out of the way, we've got Coniston water just twinkling away off in the distance. So I'm actually gonna move that way. There's more trees down there. I saw when I was flying the drone around. Um, it's, it's really good for like scouting things like that, even though I never really use it for that reason as its primary purpose. But yeah, I can see there's loads of more, loads more of the sort of lone trees dotted down there. I'm thinking that Coniston water might be a good backdrop as well. Um, I just want to stop and say another big thanks to Squarespace for kindly sponsoring today's video before I move on. If you've never heard of them, Squarespace are an all-in-one platform that you can use to build your own website. So if it's a dream that you've had to have your own website, whether you want to sell products, whether you want like a portfolio for your photographs, anything like that, I highly recommend Squarespace. My own website is through them and it was through Squarespace since before I was sponsored by them. Um, they've got loads of e-commerce options, like I just mentioned briefly, which means that you can sell stuff through the website. So if you wanna go beyond just using it as a portfolio um, and actually start selling prints and stuff, then you can do that. That's what I use it for, to sell prints, eBooks, advertising workshops on there, my calendars. Um, I'm thinking about writing a physical book as well, so that'll be going on there. Um, I wouldn't be able to run my business without it. It's also really easy to create a website with Squarespace. As far as I'm concerned, this is the best thing about the whole platform. It's a drag and drop system. They've got templates that you can use to get yourself started. You can literally have your website up and running within a couple of hours. You needn't have any knowledge of coding or web development or anything like that. It's just so easy, man. It's quality. 
And um, finally, they've got fantastic customer service as well, if you ever need a little bit of a helping hand. But yeah, another big thanks to them. If you'd like to give them a go, go to squarespace.com forward slash Henry Turner. Get yourself a two week free trial, a 14 day free trial. You've got nothing to lose. And if you like um, your website, if you like Squarespace, after your free trial, make sure to use the offer code Henry Turner at checkout for a whopping 10% off your first purchase. Um, that'll all be in the video description below. All right, let's get a little bit further down there, see if there's anything else worth getting the camera out for. Right, I'm finding it a bit tricky at the minute. I'm kind of, I've got to where I want it to be. You can see there Coniston Water sort of off in the background and I'm just trying my best. Uh, well, I'm trying my best to do two things really that are both quite contrasting. Firstly, I'm trying to find, if it's not quite obvious, some sort of foreground that complements Coniston Water, complements Coniston Water off in the background, um, which is proving quite difficult because it's a little bit messier than I thought it was around here. Maybe able to tell it's like it's it's been coppiced. There's a lot of dead branches and twigs all over the place. A lot of tree stumps. It's not quite as clean around here. That was the you know the, the, than I was hoping for. But secondly, um, I'm also trying not to get so fixated on Coniston Water off in the background and really trying to stay open to other photographical opportunities in this area because I think that. Um, can be a little bit of a bad habit when you can get a bit, you know, a bit honed in, a bit tunnel visioned on uh, one idea really of a photograph. And uh, yeah, it's happened to all, all too often with me where then you come sort of become blind to everything else um, that's around you and miss other opportunities, you know. But I'll probably end up photographing that scene at some point anyway. So I've been roaming around for about another 10 minutes or so and I do think, well I know that this is definitely the best perspective we've got over Coniston Water so far and definitely the best opportunity for a composition. You can see this one tree here is just leaning from right to left ever so slightly in towards Coniston Water. And what I'm gonna do here is use the 24 to 200 mil lens, zoomed in probably something like that actually, about 70 millimeters. And I'm gonna try and hone in on this section here where we've got the tree, Coniston Water of course, and a nice little bit of the sky as well because the sky's looking quite nice actually. Um, I've got it, as you can probably see there, in a 16 by nine aspect ratio which is helping massively because I just don't want too much of this messy floor down at the bottom of the composition. It's not, not adding anything to the photograph. We're still in aperture priority and I do think about 70 millimeters here is gonna work perfectly. So ISO 64, F11, and then one 125th of a second. I'm going to focus in on that tree. There we go. Make sure we're nice and level and something like that, I think, is gonna do us. That is the best that I've been able to get from this location, but that's not looking bad at all. Oh, so you know what, what? a chilled out little, I don't know, afternoon out with the camera. I do like, I do like it when I've not got a tripod and a little bug on me. I also, what's going on bugs? <laughs> I also like it in a way when I'm not like chasing the light, I'm not chasing sunset, sunrise, fog, all of that stuff. Um, of course, ultimately they're the sort of conditions that I wanna be amongst and be photographing in most of the time. But yeah, when you sort of come out like this, I feel like it just alleviates a lot of those stresses of chasing those conditions. And this is just lovely, man. Proper chilled out. So look, I hope you've enjoyed uh, the adventure and uh, thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next week on the next adventure. Out.